Hi guys, Paul here, and I've been getting more and more questions about how I get my uh, GoPro footage looking reasonable, uh, and especially with the Mobius 2, because I do seem to better get reasonable results with the Mobius, depending on circumstances, uh, especially the last video, the one on Lake Epilock. I had lots of people asking whether I was using a GoPro or a Mobius, and I was surprised with the quality I was getting, and a lot of people were asking, how do you get rid of the blockiness that you get with YouTube once YouTube re-encodes your video footage? Now you can't completely avoid that. It's really, really hard to do. That comes down to the way in which you actually film, the amount of movement there is in your shot and whether things look similar. And I'll explain exactly what it is that I'm talking about shortly. But what I'm gonna be doing is running through this video using Final Cut Pro, and that's the application that I use for my editing. Now if you're using uh, Vegas or um, Adobe Premiere, uh, they're all fantastic programs, you won't have any issues. So, don't focus too much on how it is I'm actually doing this edit here, but sort of take away the principles that I use here and apply them to whatever video editing application you have, and it'll hopefully make a little bit more sense to you. So in this instance, what I'm gonna be using is GoPro footage, but I do the same thing with my Mobius. Uh, if you have a look at the first video I did on my Mobius settings, um, that sort of gives a little bit of a clue in terms of how I try and get a bit better footage out of my Mobius. And I'm basically really up in the contrast. So I'm crushing the blacks um, uh, to try and get as much variation in exposure as I possibly can. And that sort of helps overcome uh, YouTube's encoding blockiness. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is actually just quickly show you this footage. Uh, I'm not sure how well this will play back because I'm capturing while playing back 1080p 60 FPS footage. But around about this region here, when you get fast movement, you'll tend to get um, blockiness in YouTube. So I'll pop to a scene and show exactly what it is that I'm talking about. And around about this region is where you'll normally get lots and lots of blockiness uh, with YouTube. And I'll explain exactly why that's actually occurring. Let me go back a bit. Um, the multi road is actually really, really close to the ground, and we've got a lot of fast movement happening, especially in this region here, where the grass is. So, you're getting a lot of blurring happening, which basically means these pixels here are all beginning to look very, very similar. Uh, playback on my computer is perfect, I've got no blockiness at all, but once I re-encode it and export it out, I'm gonna get some degree of blockiness and that'll basically compress the footage. And then once YouTube gets it, they're gonna recompress the footage again. And at that stage there, all oh, this will go really blocky, especially around this region here, uh, where the colors are very, very similar. So uh, you'll notice the trees won't go blocky, or less likely, but um, especially around this region here, you're gonna see that blockiness appear in YouTube. So the way I actually go about minimizing it is I actually crush the blacks um, and you'll see exactly what I, what I do. And I'll blow out some of the whites too. And I do that intentionally. I'm trying to increase contrast. So I'll make sure this is selected. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of this side. Just to give us a little bit more real estate. And what I'm displaying here is my uh, Luma. And that's basically showing the brightness of the scene. So we'll go to a part, okay. So around about here, this is probably a good spot for me to actually display it. And I'll explain to you exactly what we're looking at here. Uh, this is your black area and that's your whites. Now what this is saying to me here is my whites are actually blown out. So over here, the pixels are just basically as white as they're gonna possibly be. Uh, and there's no detail at all here that's completely lost. Once we go down below this region, we actually lose detail again too. So what I'm trying to do here to make it encode better is I'll intentionally crush my uh, um, colors and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So what I'll do, I'll go into color correction. Actually, I'll create a new one and we'll work with that one. So what I'll do is I'll go into my exposure and in Final Cut Pro, this will control my blacks. And you can see exactly what it's doing. Once I go below this region, I'm actually crushing the blacks. So if you have a look here, basically this is pure black. There's no detail there at all. Um, and obviously you don't want to go that far. And the same here, if I go all the way up, 
that's blown a whole lot of information out to white and this is basically completely blown out there's no detail there at all so what we'll do is reset that again so what I try to do for my YouTube encoding is I'll actually intentionally crush the blacks so I'll bring that down and the whites I'll usually push up just a little bit and the midtones I'll leave as is. Sometimes I'll play around with the midtones, but what I'm looking at here, so what I've essentially done is actually lost detail and normally you wouldn't do this in your videos because uh, you want to keep as much detail there as possible. But with a flight video footage that we do, we want to really try and avoid blockiness and I'm going to be shooting past this tree pretty quickly anyway. So you're not going to see the detail in the bark, etc. So it's not going to be such a big deal. Now, if I go back, say around about this region here and if I get out of here you'll see exactly what I've done if I that if you look carefully I'm not sure how well this is going to come up in YouTube but you can see the way the blacks are blacker and we've got a little bit more contrast here it's a little bit more punchy so realistically if I'm aiming to get the footage better here I would actually crush those blacks even more So that would actually give me a better result on YouTube than going back to the way the actual camera originally exported the footage out. Um, I've probably crushed it a little bit too far there. But um, that's essentially the trick that I use to actually get my footage looking a little bit better. Now, like I said, on the Mobius, I actually do this through the software itself. I set it up so it actually does have a higher contrast and um, essentially what happens is I do get better footage and a lot sharper footage because of it um, and the footage is really geared towards YouTube so if that's what you're trying to achieve and you've got footage that isn't very contrasty like this like the grass basically you know you're going to get a lot of blockiness here with fast movement so essentially hopefully that makes a little bit more sense in terms of what I'm actually trying to do I'm not sure how well this is going to come out on YouTube but hopefully it'll actually get the message across anyway I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I haven't been doing much flying at the moment because the weather's been absolutely horrendous here in Melbourne uh, this last week. So hopefully we'll get some chance to do some fly flying in the coming weeks and get some of these review videos happening. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found that useful and I hope that all made sense. Catch you guys later.